Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes offer a broad range of power-related measurements with the power measurements option. This video is part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply related measurements. Here we show a simplified schematic of a switch mode power supply along with a list of measurements that can be performed to fully test and characterize it. In this video demonstration, we'll focus on performing an output ripple measurement on the DC output of a power supply, which is highlighted in green here. For our demonstration, we'll be using a linear power supply evaluation board from PicoTest. The first task in making an output ripple measurement is to probe the DC output. This may sound simple, but there are some important things to consider in order to make this measurement as accurate as possible. We are going to begin our output ripple measurement using a pore probing technique, which is shown in this graphic. I'll start by using a standard 10 to 1 passive probe with its standard ground lead. And then I'll show some better probing techniques, as shown here, where I'll use a much shorter ground lead. Let's start making measurements. I'll begin with a default setup on the scope, so you can see how to, the measurement is performed from the beginning. Next, I'll go into the Analyze menu, which there's a front panel key. I can get there directly. And then select the Power Application. Under Analysis, I can see a list of all the measurements that are available with the Power option on this scope. Uh, but we're going to focus in on Output Ripple. Uh, but if you're interested in the other measurements, we have videos on those as well. The next step is to go into the Signals menu. Here you can see a, uh, a diagram similar to what I showed earlier. And this is very simple. It gives us some hints on how to connect our probe. We just have a single channel of the scope connected using a standard 10 to 1 passive probe. And it's connected to channel 1, which is the default. Now, for this first measurement, I'm using, as I mentioned, a 10 to 1 probe, and I'm also using poor grounding techniques. I'm using the standard um, long ground lead. So the next step is to press Auto Setup, and it will optimally scale it. It will turn on AC coupling and expand the, uh, the, the output ripple as much as possible across screen. So there you can see what's on, on the output using this probing technique. To perform the output ripple measurement, simply press Apply, and it turns on two measurements. It turns on output ripple, which is basically a volts peak-to-peak -peak measurement, and we're measuring somewhere in the range of 180 millivolts. It also turns on the AC RMS full scale measurement, which is the same as standard deviation and is a very common measurement uh, for looking at uh, output noise. So we're measuring about 8 millivolts of output noise. Now. This is a lot of output ripple. I have on the same bench with me a switching power supply. If I flip that off, it gets much quieter. And this is because I'm using that long ground lead, which is an antenna, and it's picking this stuff up in the air. Now, at this point, let's try doing more of a direct connection. I'm going to disconnect my probe from my test point, and I'm going to use a very short ground lead connection like I showed in it diagram earlier. And now you can see we're down to about 32 millivolts peak to peak. For this segment I've switched my probe out. Now I've connected a one-to-one -one passive probe and I put my long ground lead back on the antenna. You can see what happens when I turn the my switching power supply on which is a different power supply than the one I'm testing. It's just in the same area. But here we're basically using the same scaling, 30 millivolts per division. Now we cut in half again. Now we're down to about 15 millivolts. So let's expand this up a little bit so we can see that better since I have more sensitivity when I use a one-to-one -one probe. And now I'm going to, again, take off that long antenna. It's picking up lots of noise. And make a very short ground connection. Now you can see that I'm down to about 4 millivolts peak to peak. And for best case measurements, I could turn on um, bandwidth limit. This is a 1.5 gigahertz bandwidth scope. That may be 
far beyond what I want to measure and now I'm down to about 1.2 millivolts. So as you can see the type of probe you use and the way you ground it can make a tremendous difference in the uh, measurement accuracy of output ripple. As mentioned at the beginning of this demonstration this short video was part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply related measurements. To learn more about InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes and how they can help you test and debug your power supplies, contact your local Keysight authorized distributor and ask for a demonstration. Thank you.